Look at how many lucky thirteens are on the obverse of the great seal. We've already seen the thirteen stars of glory over the eagle's head. In the eagle's claws there are thirteen arrows, thirteen leaves on the branches hold thirteen olives, and there are thirteen stripes on the shield. Perhaps having thirteen colonies was no accident. Curiously, the eagle only has nine tail feathers. Everything has a meaning in symbolism. symbolism. Notice how it's very busy. Lot of intersection diagonally lines. You can't make out what's there. But let's get rid of the background noise. Get rid of all the diagonal lines on, that doesn't belong there. And let's reverse the principle of motion. And take what's in the background and bring it to the forefront and see what's there. Because once we do that, we find out it's quite obvious that there is another Illuminati owl in that it is perched on something that looks like an owl. That is what they don't want you to see. Once you see this owl here and compare it to the other one on the left hand side of it, it becomes very obvious that this is an owl. Our founding fathers were involved in some things that historically have not been really discussed. And that's one of the things that intrigued people about national treasure, I think. It suddenly made them aware of things that they'd been looking at, you know, all their lives. The, the triangle, the all-seeing eye that's on the pyramid in the back of the dollar, all those things had Masonic uh, beginnings. So what I made of the observation here was the pant leg. I said, is this a Freemason sort of thing? Is it, why has he got his left pant leg? That's his left pant leg, right, rolled up. And you can see it here, although they're blocking it, right? But it's, it's clearly rolled up. Why would he have his pant leg rolled up? The initiation ceremony itself is notoriously particular. It involves the initiate being, uh, initiate being blindfolded with his left trouser leg rolled up to the knee, right? His left trouser leg rolled up to the knee, right? Let's look at the Capitol building rotunda. This center point of American democracy figured prominently in Dan Brown's The Lost Symbol. Investigative mythologist William Henry has interpreted the significance of the Capitol building as the solemn temple at the heart of America. Looking up through the oculus in the Capitol dome, we see Constantino Brumidi's huge fresco entitled Apotheosis of George Washington. The word apotheosis means elevation of a man into God. George Washington is sitting on a rainbow up in the clouds surrounded by 13 maidens and flanked by the goddesses Liberty and Victory. Clearly elevates Washington into some kind of solar deity. Six allegorical groupings in a hexagonal arrangement tell stories centered on the ancient gods Mercury, Vulcan, Ceres, Minerva, Neptune, and Columbia. What does all this pagan symbolism have to do with the official history of the United States? Nothing. The goddesses personified on both sides of the Atlantic as nature, reason, liberty, freedom, and Columbia are all esoteric references to the Egyptian goddess Isis. Following the goddess Liberty upward, we see how the entire District of Columbia was originally surveyed by George Washington in 1791. They are signs of Satanism, but we know there is a more powerful symbol, and that is the cross. 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 You are tuned into God's Property Radio. Here are your hosts, Sam and Dan.